Hey, it's Kirk Barrett, and you are watching the Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all across the country. And man, do I have a treat for you today. He is Dr. Chris Ramsey, one of my favorite. So do me a favor, hit the share button and grab a pen. You're going to love this. We'll see you in just a second. All right. Hey, welcome back. Thank you for watching the Best Practices Show, where we are surrounding ourselves with great people. And if you're watching this, you're going to love today because I've got one of my favorite people in the world, a good friend of mine, uh, who I've watched uh, do some amazing things. And you're going to see a lot of that today on the Best Practices Show. So, hey, before you get started, a couple things. Now, we're shooting this live. And as you have questions that come up, Please feel free to do two things. Hit the share button and then also enter your questions in on the right-hand side. As uh, I'm talking to Dr. Ramsey, we're going to be talking about a very important subject called Manic Mondays. How do we deal with Manic Mondays at a great restorative practice? And uh, as questions come up, feel free to you know type them in the side. And if we have a chance or as we have a chance, I will ask Dr. Ramsey those questions because it's always good to learn from the master. So, Chris, good to see you, brother. Hey, my man, what's going on, brother? All right, I'm so excited. Now, he's he's one of those guys. You're one of the hottest new upcoming speakers in the country. You're all over the place. You were just uh, speaking out in Seattle. Uh, That's for Dr. In the Seattle Study Club Network. I've had a chance to get to meet you uh, and get to know you well over the last couple of years, and it's been fun. And you're just coming back from uh, Red Eye, and you are where? Tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and who you are. So we're actually coming to you live from uh, Jupiter, Florida, where I'm practicing. Uh, I got a business partner, and we grind it out four days a week uh, here, Monday through Thursday. Then usually hop a flight, run out to wherever I need to speak on Fridays, and then get myself back here. And you're right. We just got back from Seattle, ran out there, did two gigs uh, Thursday and Friday, and then took the red eye back. So I'm looking, I guess, pretty decent for a uh, return. I got a lot of sleep over the weekend. Yeah, you always look good, though. You always look good. And if you haven't had Chris Ramsey speak to your study club, you got to get him. This guy is wildly entertaining, ah, extremely relevant, you. powerful. So it's good stuff. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, hey, so, you know, you and I have talked about this. We could talk about a hundred things, but one of the things that happens on a Monday is ah. just coming back. You get, you know, you're sitting in on a Sunday, you're thinking about, hey, look, tomorrow's a big day in a restorative practice. One of the one of the myths is people are like, oh, it's perfect. You know, a lot of times people are looking forward to Monday and they say, oh, my practice is all that great. And that's not always the truth of a great restorative practice. A good friend of ours, mutual friend, Dr. Bill Robbins, I love how he says this. He says, a lot of dentists sit back on Sunday and they go, oh, I'm so looking forward to Monday. And he says, I am not one of them because the truth of a great restorative practice or a great specialty practice is Monday often lends itself to the least predictability. So um, that's a great topic. A lot of people thinking about how do we handle Mondays and how do you guys look at Mondays? Yeah, well, I got to tell you, first of all, if you think about it, Kurt, I can't think of a better day to talk about Mondays than this Monday. Why is that? Because so many people right now that you are broadcasting to or that will see this at a later date will realize today is February 27th, I think, and everyone's just come back from Chicago midwinter, right? Yes. So a huge, huge return. What happens? You've gotten CE, you're pumped up, you're all excited, maybe you bought some stuff, it's just been mayhem all week and you're coming back, you're all jazzed up for Monday, and what does Monday give you? The most unpredictable day of the week. It is brutal. And so um, I will agree with Bill Robbins. I almost can't stand Mondays. I'm excited to go in the office because I'm always excited about what I do, but I get there and I'm like, oh my God, you got to be kidding me because... No matter how good it is, I mean, people can hire your company and get there and get all the systems in place. And then what happens? No matter how much those systems are in place, there's so many variables you can't control. Who, oh, oh, I slept over. Oh, I didn't know what happened. Oh, I got an emergency. Oh, I got this problem. Oh, I came in. My computers don't work. Oh, my hygienist is called out sick. Oh, someone's kid is vomiting from Sunday night. You know, Mm -hmm. oh, I've got an earache. Oh my God, I want to shoot myself. You know, it's one of those things. So it's just out of control. It's 
the difference between Monday and Tuesday, it, it's like months apart. It's amazing. And so, um, you know, people often talk about uh, doing your morning huddles. If you were only going to do one a week, you got to do them on Mondays because mm-hmm. everyone's half dead coming in on autopilot. You know, uh, so Mondays are Mondays are crazy. And so I always like talking about Mondays. How do we try to get those things under control and try to, in the midst of all this mayhem, try to make some sense of it and and uh, and have some predictability in an unpredictable day? Yeah, absolutely. And you and I were talking about before we went live, you know, you and I, we both love the book, The Energy Bus. Now, I don't know if this is absolutely perfectly true, but in the book, it says the number one time people die in the United States yes. is Monday morning at 9 a.m. So that means, statistically right. speaking, some people would rather die than go to work. And so you're one of those people that would rather go to work than die. And that's so take me right. through the, the mind of a restorative dentist when you wake up on Monday. Like, what are you doing? Are you guys doing your huddles on Monday? Like, what do you do? Well, yeah. So we should, obviously we come in like every other office, and, and what you, what I like to do on Mondays is come in just a tad earlier, just to get a pulse of what's going on. So right off the bat, I'm going to tell you if you want to ever come in on a day that's a little bit earlier than the rest of the days, I think Monday's the best because even before the morning huddle, I think it gives you an opportunity to get a pulse of what's going on. Hey, how was your weekend? And what's going on? You don't have time in a morning huddle to go around to everybody. How was your weekend? So I like to come in a little bit early. And as people are drifting in, just get a feel. That simple question of, hey, how was your weekend? It can answer a lot of questions because someone says, oh my God, it was great. I went to this art festival and it was great and blah, blah, blah. Somebody says, well, it was okay. That might be your chance to go, what do you mean by okay? And then sometimes you find out, oh, I got in a fight with my husband or me and my boyfriend broke up. Because the reality is this, Kirk, you've heard me say this, and I say this at every lecture, you know, 30 programs, 35 programs a year, I'm saying the same thing. When that bell rings at eight o'clock from eight to five, which is my hours, eight to five, it's a show. It is a show. It doesn't matter how your day's going. If your dog's died, you broke up with your boyfriend, the consumer does not care. You know, um, I use this analogy all the time. If you go to New York to see a show, you're going to schlep up to New York, do some tours. And then the big thing is you go to a show. Could you imagine going to a show, sitting down, you've paid $150 a ticket to go to Broadway, the actor gets on there and all of a sudden he starts kind of messing up his lines a little bit, you know, it's not really making sense. He's like, what was my line? Um, kind of half-assing it. I don't mean to right. you know, use that word, but half-assing it. You got to imagine, and then, then imagine someone came and tapped you on the shoulder and said, we're really sorry the performance isn't so good. He had a fight with his wife last night. You'd be like, I don't care. I right. paid $150 for these seats. Put on the show. Put on the show. So right. for me, 8 to 5, it's a show. It's the Ritter and Ramsey show, 8 to 5. So the only thing you need to remember is when someone says, hey, how's your day going? My day's going great. So yeah. the illusion is everything's going great because ultimately that's what people are paying for. Somebody's giving you $1,000 for a crown. They're not buying a commodity. They're buying everything, the environment, what's going on, the conversation, how well they're being taken care of. That first phone call is, you know how we answer the phone, Kurt? We do it over 10 years. It's an outstanding day at Dr. Ritter and Dr. Ramsey's office, and this is Ashley, and I can help you. Does it sound a little corny? It's a lot better than doctor's office. Please hold. You know, So right from the get-go, people go, it's an outstanding day. She gets that question a lot. It's an outstanding day. It is an outstanding day. We are having a blast here and everything's great. When people go, how's your day going? Everybody here goes, day's going great. Now, is that true? Ultimately, we don't know, but it doesn't matter. The illusion is everything has to be going well. I check in at the Ritz. I don't care if the girl behind the desk is having a bad day. That's not what I'm paying for. I'm paying for her to go, welcome to the Ritz Carlton, Dr. Ramsey. It's so good to see you again. Yeah. Absolutely. And even if you're not having the greatest day, what happens is just a little piece of this just creates a little bit more momentum. You have a good interaction, the right mindset for everybody on the team. When you start, you got to go and make it showtime. Now, think about this. One of the two of you has to get excited, either the patient or you as a team member. And I'm guessing a lot of people don't come to your practice go, I am so pumped, man. You're going to you're gonna prep these teeth, right? I'm so fired up. Like, I need a yeah. root canal. I want you to put some, you know, just do it all. I'm so pumped to be here. Yeah. And, uh, well, let, let me tell you about that, Kirk, because, you know, it's funny you just mentioned that because I'm going to tell you something I tell everybody in lecture. And when the first time they hear this, I watch them and I go, let me repeat that. And I'll repeat what I'm about to tell you. Because I tell everybody, do me a favor, take your dental hat off. In fact, right now, if somebody's listening or watching this podcast in any capacity, whenever it is, even if it's a week from the date that I stated, wherever you are, maybe you're in your car or your home or whatever, if you listen to this, no matter what you do in dentistry, what I'm about to say, you need to take your dental hat off for just a second. 
Just take it off and picture yourself as a person. So here's my statement. The dental office is a crappy place to be for a customer, for a patient. This is not great. The majority of relationships that start off here are actually not great ones. Let me explain why. A patient comes in, they sit down. Now they've met your front desk. They've met, you know, maybe they've called, they've come in, they've met your hygienist. Now you're walking in to meet them for the first time. And pretty much you're about to sit back a stranger after making some pleasantries and make a list of everything that's wrong with them. Like that's yeah. going to be a positive experience. So imagine I'm going to go on a blind date with some nice female. I say, hey, it's nice to meet you. Listen, before we go out, um, here's what I'd like to do. Let me just tell you a couple things. Um, your shoes are ugly. Uh, the hair is absolutely terrible. And uh, that shirt is really not my favorite color. But hey, dinner should be great tonight, right? So that's what happens. You sit a patient back and you go, you have a crack on two, mobility on three, recession on four. And then you make some pseudo list that if they take care of it, they're gonna be a better person for it. Oh, what a yeah. terrible environment. It's not good. It's not good. So we've really got to be conscious of the fact that nobody wants to be here. I mean, because they're so used to, I got to go there and they're going to tell me everything that's wrong. And man, I got to tell you, my goal in this job is to figure out how to dynamically change the interpersonal relationships of what's going on in the dental chair so people don't feel like, oh, it's another place where they're just going to tell me everything that's wrong with me. Because that's how dentists, you still train to this day in the dental school, make a list, make a treatment plan. But treatment plan is synonymous for you got all these problems. Right. So it's got to, it's got to change, man. And it's got to change, especially if you're going to change it on a Monday. Yeah, absolutely. That's your opportunity in the marketplace. You're exactly right. People are not excited about going to the dentist. A lot of times these relationships are by default. They right. have a problem, they come find you. And then they, you know, the, the, the currency in the whole relationship is the relationship itself. You know, absolutely. if you were talking about the date, when a date starts like that, I swear I was on a few of those dates before I met Sarah and they <laughs> do not, they never ended up materializing being anything. And you're closer to Disney than anybody. I don't know if this is true, but I've always heard the 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 old myth about Disney. They have the little box. Have you heard this before they go to work? That Disney employees are required to take all their stuff, whatever's going on, and they fold it up and they put it in this little box and they put it over on the side because it's game time. It's show time. Right. So once we hit the floor, we got to start in, you know, changing and influencing people's lives. Well, little little secret, Kurt. Little yeah. secret. I worked for Disney. Did you really? Yeah, man. I was. I was. I, I danced six nights a week in the electric light parade, and I was a character. It's a secret. But if I'm six foot two, you should be able to figure out which character. Um, <laughs> but I was character trained. So I worked for Disney. So yeah, you know, all my lectures regarding body language, decision making, art of persuasion, a lot of customer service and motivation goes on in that five hours. But a lot of these things that I talk to people about are huge customer service aspects. And a lot of it did come from working in the hospitality industry for 12 years and working for Disney. So I could I could talk to you five sessions just on what I learned, you know, working for Disney. So I'm a customer service fanatic, but what you're saying is so true. I actually learned that mentality. You never go to Disney and find an employee who's not having a blast. You can walk up to somebody and go, I think I want to throw up. Could you help me? And they'll be like, oh, absolutely. Let me take you to this garbage can and I'll hold your hair back for you. You know, they're so excited to be there. You know, they cultivate a culture that if a dental office could actually follow suit of a, Dis a Disney model, <laughs> It'd be unstoppable, but we yeah. get it. We get in our own way, is what the problem is. Yeah, that's awesome. So, do you, so give, walk me through this. How you, you know, you and Dr. Ritter, you guys have you guys have a very rock solid vision for how you guys want to experience not only dentistry but your team and your patients. You guys go in on Monday morning. What are some of the things that you do in your morning huddle to get everybody prepared, get them thinking the right way? Well, here, here, let me, I'm actually going to back up just a little bit if it's okay. I want to, I want to share something with you because I want to be fair. Cause I think anybody that listens to this podcast, um, you know, the, the hardest thing is, you know, you and I've been to a million meetings together. We've hung out. We look at these meetings sometimes and you look at certain people who speak and you say, is that relevant to me? Sometimes you see this dentistry, it's pie in the sky. You walk out, you're like, I'm not doing that. You know, yeah. or sometimes you see things that don't seem relevant. So, so let me be clear just so I get all the cards on the table for the people who are listening to this. The first reality is I'm a restorative dentist and that's all I do. So what does that mean? No perio, no endo, no ortho. And these are by choice. Rob Ritter and I, who I practice with, we chose to do restorative dentistry at a very high level. In a sense, I don't want to use the word specialized, but that's truly what it is. We make sure that we understand everything about restorative dentistry to a certain degree. Now, a lot of people listening to this may say, well, I don't have that luxury. Maybe I'm just getting out of school. I'm only a couple of years out. My debt load is that I would never tell someone how to practice. All I would say to you is whatever you're doing, 
do the best thing you can to do it well. And you truly in your heart know what that means. So you want to do great endo and you want to do your own endo, do as much CE you can to provide great endo. I get that you got bills to pay, but you got to do it well. That's a side note. So one of the things is right off the bat is I control the amount of things. So my day can only be so crazy because I've already started to control my environment. I don't want to come in here and be jumping room to room with a bunch of unpredictable procedures. That's the first thing. So you want to make your life easier right off the bat is start eliminate one thing you can't stand. You want to know, talk about an amazing Monday. If you can't stand doing removable, imagine next Monday if you've made it. Okay, I'm not doing any more removable. Once it's off your schedule, the next Monday you come in and you no longer do a removable, you're going to go, oh my God, this is an mm -hmm. awesome day. So yeah. that's how it worked for me. I started to eliminate those things that didn't bring me joy. I'm going to put you on the spot. Please. A while back, Kurt, you said specifically to me verbatim, I want to do things in this field that bring people joy. Yeah. You said that to me. That was your yeah. exact verbatim words. And that stuck with me. And I got to tell you, the first thing you got is right, you got to make yourself happy. You're right. not going to make me happy, Kirk, if you're not, if you yourself are not happy. So I've got to be happy coming in saying, I'm controlling my environment. My environment's not controlling me. So that's right. the first thing I did. So Rob and I decided to do restorative dentistry only. So we get in here and now we get together and we say, okay, what's the day going to look like? And one of the first things that I did was early on is learn from you what it means to set aside specific times in my schedule. It can't be a schedule of just anything, anywhere, anytime. It just creates too much mayhem. And the ones that get really bagged down is your team members. You know, the team yeah. members are just losing their mind. So you got to have some sort of structure to your day. That's my first advice. Is your day have any structure to it whatsoever? And it doesn't have to mean change everything right away. At least right. go out a couple weeks or a month or two, wherever you are, and you say, okay, go to somewhere where you don't have any patients. Pick that day and try once a week to say, this day is going to be my structured day. I've got production here, inserts here, composites here, whatever. Start to get some structure in your life. I think that's the first, that's the first step, I think. That's yeah. just you know, right off the bat. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know how this is. When you get your practice started or any business started, you're going to say yes to a lot of different things. And it's going to create the flow that you've been looking for. But one of the things that age does for you as you start to age and mature, you realize that the word yes, yes, yes only leads to a lot of stuff that maybe you're not crazy about. And then your future growth only comes from one word. It's called no, where you say, I'm not doing that anymore. Or I'm not doing this anymore. And you start being a little bit more intentional. And that's what you guys did right. it. And you, you know, use the word joy too. The thing is, is as you get older, you're like, I, it's not so much about money anymore. It's about doing the right thing with the right people at the right time of day. Right. And then right. all of it collectively comes together. The byproduct becomes things you could never imagine. So it's crazy important. And really what you guys had to do is you guys had to get super clear, not necessarily pot, you know, package somebody else's vision, but you guys got really clear about the way, way you wanted to see it so that it happens not perfectly every day, but more often every day. Yeah, I think, I mean, listen, I think per, per you know, uh, we have a saying here, you know, striving, stri striving for perfection, accepting only excellence, right? So it's a journey to try to, to try to get perfection, but there's so many elements. If you think about so many elements that go into your day, your team members, your patients, your physical plants, everything that goes into your day, you've got to start taking control of those things that you, that have control before they take control of you. And this is not things I'm so smart about. These were, these were things that mentored people told me early on. They said, get control of these things because you're going to wake up one day, you're going to be 15 years into your career and you're going to look around, you're going to go, uh Oh, you know, now I'm, I'm deep, I'm deep. I'm buried in insurance plans. Maybe I don't want to be in. I'm in buried in an environment I don't want to be in. I'm buried with team members who don't act the way I want. This is not my vision. And then there's a point where you start getting scared. You're like, I'm afraid to change anything now because now I'm in the flow. I've, I've got these bills. I've got this life. I've got all this stuff. And all of a sudden, it's scary to make a change. So I've never been one to say, come in and turn a practice on its head instantly. But you can implement some very small changes right, right from the get-go. So I got kind of off the path, but you said on the morning huddle. So we get together, and I think the biggest goal right now is for everyone to be able to have input on where they see there could be problems in the day. Yeah. Not how great the day is structured. Where do we see things might get jammed up? And right off the bat, okay, are where right off the bat, the question I like to say is, where's my emergency times today? 
Because understand the people with the biggest priority are the ones who have that appointment. you got to honor that. I believe right. that wholeheartedly. A guy's taking time off of work to come inside you. He's got a 9 a.m. You can't say, well, I'm running late because I squeezed in that emergency who had no appointment. I see the emergency every, every day, but the emergencies are a work in. Never are they a designated time. They're a work in, and patients are told that. So you've got to recognize the people who've got the, who've made the appointment, who've made the commitment to your practice. You got to give them the time that's allotted. So I'm big on never running five minutes behind. You know, yeah. I, I, I and if, let me tell you, I could go on all day about just scheduling. But if I run behind, Kurt, let me tell you, you know who goes out and tells that patient I'm running ten or fifteen minutes behind? Who? Me, me. Yeah. I walk out there. Take my gloves off, wash my hands, scrubs. I mean, my my loops around my neck. I walk out there. I sit right next to him. I go, Joe. Listen, I apologize, brother. Your time is valuable. Who you know who taught me uh, to say please and thank you? Who? Kirk Barron. No stop. I swear to God. I swear. Your to God, your parents were really good. They taught you no, a lot they, of great stuff. No, they told me to say please and thank you out here. But who? But you know what happens? We forget to do that in the practice. I have a slide. My last slide before my last slide says, thank you very much. After a five hour day, it has the five things that you showed, you know, you want to get more referrals, be on time, plate C, say please and thank you, do what you're going to say, what you're going to do, make the call. You know that slide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So say please and thank you. So I go out there and go, listen, I'm running behind. Would you like to wait or would you like to reschedule? And let me tell you, if that guy has to reschedule, I'm going to make it up to him in some way because people, you got to value people's time and money. That's yeah. the first thing. So honor those appointments. But that's what you got to do as your team in the morning. Where do we see possible breakdown? Kirk, I got to tell you too. I use these. I use these morning huddles too. I always want to see who and who is not in the moments. Right. As we're getting revved up, you imagine a, a big football team. You ever seen those teams are all bouncing together? Ooh, ooh, and they're all getting ready to go out. Right. You can always yeah. tell if there's one. The energy's not there, whatever. I may break that up there, and I got to isolate that one person because, as we've all seen, you can. It only takes one. It only yeah. took. It only took one iceberg to bring down the Titanic. Absolutely. What happens is you become the lowest co common denominator factor. You know, everybody's energy will come down to wherever that person's at. So it's critical. Absolutely. 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 You know, it's they. They say you're. A, you know, you're. A, you're. A, you're segments of the people you hang out with. You know, and. Uh, Show you me, show me your three friends, and I'll show you who you are. That type of thing. It happens daily. You know, if you got one person low energy, you gotta you, you gotta nip that in the bud. You know, yeah. so uh, we operate on the under the premise that it is it's a sh it's a show. You know, if you live in North Carolina and your practice is X Y Z of North Carolina, let me tell you, it doesn't take long to build a reputation. That reputation can go either way. Right. You know, and you need it to be one that go. Wow, those people are great. That service is great. Nobody cares about my preps, Kurt. I got to be honest with you. No one right. no cares how I prep, how I impress, how how many scan I use. I've got four digital scanners in my practice. You don't hear dentists with four digital scanners. Do my patients care? Not at all. They care yeah. about that amazing phone contact. That when they come in, the water, the coffee that we have to offer them, the TVs on the chair. So maybe if I am running a couple minutes behind, they're keeping themselves entertained. They want to feel like, hey, you know what? This place is really running well. And the best compliments I get, if somebody goes right now to RitterAndRamsey.com um, and you looked at our Google reviews, we have over 210 Google reviews. And I know you'll do people with social media and the importance of that. But yeah. read those reviews. Read those reviews. They're almost all about my team. That's yeah. the crazy thing. These people were amazing. And you yep. start to see that in your reviews. That plays a huge factor as we develop uh, relationships and get more patients. Yeah, and absolutely. And you can't fake that. The secret sauce to any great business are always the people. The people come first. Patients always come second. So you guys have done a marvelous job with that over and over again. The other thing, too, I just want to go back to it. When you have the leaders that have a great attention to detail on time, everything else follows suit. You know, it is true. You know, being on time is actually late now when you're, you know, the new on time is early. And when you're not on time, it screams, I don't care. So it's critically important. Your business screams, I care. We care a lot. And right. I think you could, I can, I respecting people's time and money is critically important. You can actually screw up a little bit financially. I don't recommend that. But one thing you cannot mess around now is their time because their right. time is crazy precious. So, so let me let me let me talk to you about that because um, I just came back from Seattle. Did two two programs, 140 team members in one, 100 in the other, and it was it was a great day. So I ask a lot of rhetorical questions. So the question has to be: Is when you're controlling your own environment, you're listening to this podcast right now, and you're saying, "I want to get more control of my environment to have a better experience overall." You've got to be able comfortable with drawing some lines in the sand. Let me give you an example. I've got a 30-minute appointment to do someone's side book to do someone's composite. They show up 
13 minutes late. The question is, now do you take them back? Well, unless you're Speedy Gonzalez and some biological thing is going to amazingly get them numb quicker or whatever, the reality is you don't have enough time to do it correctly if you if you think, hey, I can do it in 30 minutes. So now what are you going to do? Do you take them back and screw up everybody coming in behind them? Or do you draw that line in the sand, walk out there and say, listen, I'd love to see you. We're more than a third, you know, almost a third late for our appointment. I've got to reschedule you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that's the answer. Maybe not for everyone, but I'm going to tell you that's been the answer for us. It didn't have to happen that often. You know what happens the next time? People show up early. Absolutely. So it doesn't take long. People know we'll honor your time, but you've got to do the same. It doesn't take long to train patients. Patients talk about that. They're like, man, those guys are on time. Boom, 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 boom. And they'll even tell their friends, listen, don't be late because he won't see you if you're late. Yeah. Yeah, what what you do over time is you teach people how to treat you. So when you're reappointing them, you're saying, hey, look, this this isn't okay. I want to take great care of you. In order for us to do that, you got to come back. You got to be on time next time. Right, right. I've asked many people, you want it done quick or you want it done right? Usually those two don't coincide. And so, um, you know, I'm I'm big on that. So, you know, it's amazing. You can draw these lines in the sand, but you can also be so nice about it and be so great about it. But you're right. It's amazing how you create a culture. That I'm really big on. You're creating a culture of what we want what we want to be, you know, what, yeah. how do we want to run this facility? How do we want to block out our time so that we are doing, we, it's all really about efficiency, right? We just want to be efficiency so that I can do this when I'm 65, if I wish to, and not right. be killing myself and miserable, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So after the huddle, take us through again, through how your mind works. What do your Monday mornings look like? And then are you taking a lunch and typically yeah. on your day? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, they say they don't take a lunch. You know, I would tell you that's specific to each office. Um, you know, again, I've learned from a lot of people smarter than me that, that it's not about the hours in the day. It's how much I can do. So I came into this practice and it already established itself having a lunch from one to two every day. So I molded to that and I've always been fine with that. A lunch is a funny thing because it for us, it has created a reset. If you're having a crazy morning and things are running late and things are broken and this and that, it's amazing how you can come back and then at two o'clock, it feels like it was a reset button. Everyone's coming back in for two o'clock appointments. So I do use that sometimes as a reset. And then if I run over or quite frankly, if I got to squeeze somebody in, I just don't have anything else. I do have that hour. Should I decide, okay, today I won't take a lunch and I'll work through my lunch, but I'll be honest with you. I don't do that that often because sometimes I need a reset. So we have our morning huddle. We find out where we think the problems could arise. We make sure we recognize all the little things that need to happen in a productive day. What's that mean? That means your team has had to do a little bit of back work before that money morning huddle, typically the day before, which is some sort of a of a review of charts. So right. the hygienist should know, okay, I've got Mrs. Jones coming in. She's due for an FMX. She's due for bite wings. She's due for this. Um, we These are the people we know for sure we're going to need exams. These are people that don't need exams. Let me go a step further. We've gone to make sure which people can be So a lot of reappointing gets done from the chair in a hygiene appointment. That's very common. But which people they recognize early on now, which people have to be can just be reappointed and just and and go ahead and and head out of the practice because sending everybody up to the front, like you're dumping them on the front desk when some people will go, you don't really need anything. Thanks for coming. A lot of times my head just walks them to the front door because they've already recognized through the communication of the office. They don't need to check out. They're already reappointed. We're, they're good to go. So it, we help bog down the uh, traffic jam uh, you know, and the checkout area as well. So all those little details are so important from an efficiency standpoint. Let's be honest. We want to be productive. We don't want anything to fall through the cracks either. And it's impossible sometimes. I mean, you know, for hygienists and all the craziness and all the exams, and tr- but we do the best we can. But a lot of that is night before, check your charts. Make sure you're ready for the morning huddle about what needs to happen on these patients specifically, which by the way, I don't mean to go off on another tangent. I talk about lines in the sand. Kirk, let me be really honest. And I think some younger practitioners probably want to hear this. Maybe they don't want to hear it, but they'll say, oh God, I'm glad he said that. Yeah. When someone's due for something such as x-rays, there is no, oh, you can skip those x-rays. When it comes to quality care, You got to get those things done. I had a very good friend of mine today. I could show you the text right here. She's Mm -hmm. an attorney. Her husband's a radiologist. He doesn't want to take x-rays. And I'm like, okay, I love you. You're my friend. I've known Mm -hmm. you since high school. You're an attorney. Of all people, you should know who would walk into a cardiologist and say, "Uh, no CT scan, no EKG. 
just treat me. It's not right. happening. It's right. not happening. So that's a line in the sand. I will not risk my license on things. And people say, oh, can they just sign this paper? I don't believe in that either. Because a yeah. patient can't sign away whether they really know what it truly means to say no to good diagnostics. Yeah. So, yeah, it's my house. You got to abide by my rules. Kirk, you come to my house. I'll make you dinner. We'll have a good time. But if you start knocking stuff over, I'm going to be like, hey, buddy, my house, bro. My house. I my love house. it. Yeah, yeah, and that's, a, that's the important thing to remember about dentistry. Your house, your rules. We, you know, it costs a lot to become a dentist. You've gone through extensive training. You went through all the hard work to get there financially. It's time Absolutely. to make your own rules. It's called the standard of care. So the important piece is you make the rules and you know what the rules are. Make them throughout the whole process. You don't have to think that much. We do it one way. We do it the right way. And there's really no right. less expensive way than to do something the right way the first time. So right. if you're going right. to do it right, do it right from the beginning. Right. I get a lot of people who, who do that. I mean, it, it happens almost every week. Oh, I don't want to take x-rays. I'm like, I, listen, I totally get it. And you need to know, yeah. uh, you need to know, hey, as a patient, I love you. You're, you're yeah. great. You know, and I want you to stay here. But you got to understand this is not, you're not getting a haircut here. This yeah. is a medical facility. You know, yeah. in fact, I'll tell you something we do, Kirk, that I got to tell you, amazing. You know, we do it before every patient, before every patient every day. What? Tell me. We take a, we take a blood pressure. Oh, <gasps> uh, Yeah. And what do you mean take a blood pressure? I go, yes, get from, from uh, Henry Schein, get the cuffs or whatever. Yep. I've had EMS in my office since in my career four times. Two of those people in the hospital for over five days. You discover, wow. wow, someone's got a bad blood pressure. And people are like, who discovered this? They're like, my dentist. They're like, I've never heard of that. Yeah. You know, we owe it to people, you, I, the people who know better to continue to elevate the standard of care. Take a blood pressure before you start. You will, it's not about the people you treat. You quickly realize, whoa, you got a problem here. I've had, I got a lady still brings me cookies to this day, saved her life two years ago because she didn't know she had a problem in the yeah. hospital for six days. So wow. it's those little things that people go, this office is different. That's all you really want is the people to recognize, wow, this is an experience. Yeah, and if you're watching this, please hear this because everywhere you go, you see all this stuff about corporate, you know, all this stuff about all that's going on. Everybody has a marketplace. Every, you know, everybody's trying to make a living here, but this is your opportunity. There are people out there that fix teeth and there are people out there that change or save lives and that changes the game. So it's Absolutely. powerful when you do that, man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, you know, you just can't say enough. You, you can't say enough about controlling, just controlling your, um, controlling your environment. It's it's right. so important. You know, I, you know, actually, I don't know. I hope we're okay on time. But I'll, yeah. I want to tell you, I asked, a, I asked a great question um, uh, while in Seattle, and it got such a great response. I said to people, "There's a, there's imagine there's a knock on your front door. You open it up, and you're like, hey, how you doing? Nice looking person, whoever it is, guy, girl, whatever." I go, how much would you have to know about that person before you would say, hey, come on in my house and play with my kids. Come on in and hang out with my wife. You know, how, what, how much do you have to know about that person coming through before you let them hang out in your casa, watch your TV, eat your food, sit down and enjoy your home, which is your domain? And yes. people are like, a lot. I go, yeah. then why would it be any different for the people that you want to expose to the team who you should love? Right. If you don't have, if you have team members, and you're like, I can't stand her. Why are you subjecting yourself to that? Like, right. that's what I get. People come in all day. They're like, oh man, I hate her. I hate her. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you're kidding. She's worked for you for how long? 15 years. I can't stand her. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> so it's Sounds unbelievable. horrible. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. So, you know, that, that gets me into the whole thing about, you know, how, what's your practice becoming? What is it becoming? Um, you know, Rob Ritter and I, a couple years back, um, we had to make a decision. Do we stay a hundred percent fee for service? And if anybody knows anything about South Florida, you know, do you stay a hundred percent fee for service and know that in the summer it gets so quiet, man, there can be days there's tumbleweed rolling through here. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You know, you have to the, look at, like it or not, this is not a four letter word, your dental practice. It's a business, right? You know, um, you gotta be business minded. You gotta know what's going on in your business. And so we made some decisions to say, you know what? Let us look into some of these plans that we can look at and say, okay, this is reasonable, mainly because we could watch over years the trend of times that it would be really slow. I don't want to send girls home early. They got We promised them 40 hours. I'm going to give you 40 hours. So there's some economic decisions to be made, and everybody, dentists, will struggle with that one way or another. We chose to do it. But, Kurt, I'm going to share something with you. I've been dying to tell the world. I tell it in lectures, but I'm going to share it with you, and hopefully 
all your people will hear it. The best thing we ever did, and I didn't get this from anybody. This mm-hmm. is totally like off, just off the top of my head, and it's worked for years. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a numbers. We okay? Can I give you some numbers? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Here we go. So let's use four thousand. Let's say Rob and I have four thousand patients. It's a round number. Just to use a round number. We decided that at no point did we want more than say, uh, I'll just say, uh, uh, I'm going to round up. For the people listening, to be fair to them, I'm going to round up and let's say 30%. We don't want 30% more than 30% of our practice to be involved with uh, a PPO. Let me be clear, no HMO, but right. PPO, which is very common. For, and there's a lot of practitioners going to listen to this podcast and say, yeah, I need to sign up for some of those. I totally get it. I totally get it. Okay, it's a business decision. But here was the best thing we did. So we said, we're going to take 1,200 people and we're willing to take 1,200 of the 4,000 and let them be insurance. So we picked a couple plans. Now for round numbers, let's just say we picked three plans. Mm -hmm. So what did we do? We did something no one's ever heard of. We actually capped each one of those insurances on the amount of people that we'd be willing to take. Now, right now, someone's driving in their car, listening to the podcast, and they just pulled over. And they're like, what the hell did he just say? I said, yeah. a cap on that number. So if you were, we decided to take uh, Cigna, we said, okay, 400 Cigna people only, that's it. And right. then we said, right. uh, you know, another 400 of this one and another 400 of that one. That was the 1,200. So what happened there? It created an unbelievable environment. Every day we woke up, every day we came in, we were never more than 1,200 people on our insurance. Because what happens? Every young practitioner listening right now signs up, the floodgates open, you take as many as you can, you wake up 10 years from now, and what do you got? You got a practice that's 75% PPO that you never really wanted. You're miserable because now you're a slave to whatever changes they make. You don't feel like you can ever drop anything because you're screwed, right? I mean, in a sense. So we said- we're going to only take 400 of each one. And pra- practitioners all over the world, dentists are like emailing me. They're like, can you do that? Yeah. I'm like, can you do what? And they go, are you allowed to do that? I go, here's a shocking thing. It's your practice. Yep. You can do whatever you want. Now, within the confines of insurance, as you know, Kurt, what do we do? You honor to take certain fees. You take those fees. You can't change that. That's insurance fraud. So you right. abide by those rules. But what happens when number 401 calls from that Cigna plan and they want to get in? That's the line in the sand I talked about. I'm sorry, Mr. Jones. Unfortunately, right now we are capped out in the amount of people we're taking within your plan. We would love to take your name because every month we consolidate. Sometimes we have people move away. And if they do, we'd be happy to call you. Man, oh man, Kurt, people are flipping out. Why? Because you got an industry down the street. 20 people come to our office. Number 21s are like, I'm trying to get in there. How come I can't get in there? Can you call for me? And I get a lot of phone calls. Can you let my friend in? I'm, I, I really can't. you got to stick to that number. But the yeah. day that you call that person and you say, hey, um, Marcy, whatever her name is, we've had two slots open for you. Uh, and I know that you were inquiring. Would you like those for you and your, your husband? She goes, oh, you bet your pants I do. She yeah. takes them. And now what happens? She never leaves because she knows if I leave, I can't come back. Yeah. Well, so I've created – there's a great book. The, uh, it's about influence from Robert Cialdini. Great book. He covers the six aspects of, uh, of uh, persuasion. And, um, and I will tell you, the book is actually called Influence. And it's, ama- it's amazing because I lecture on those topics, and that topic is actually known as scarcity. Where you, right? You make something that you can't have, you want it badly. Badly. Oh, yeah. yeah and, you and guys talk. Yeah, absolutely. Go buy a restaurant, and there's only one table left. I want it. I don't care what time it is. I'm going to get it. But I go buy a restaurant. There's nobody in there. We're not eating there. Same thing happens on Travelocity. If you ever order, you know, buy a flight on Travelocity, it says, "Oh, this fare, there's only two left at this price." And you're like, "Oh man, I got to, I got to hit you on that, or else you're not going to make." I mean, people do want the things that they can't have. Now, the cool part here's the big thing that's really important. If you're listening to this. What you guys have done is genius because you control all the variables. These are like little dials that you play with and say, hey, look, you know what? You don't have to take every single person that calls. You can say, hey, look, I'm only going to take a number and it's going to backfill maybe some of the spaces that we have in our practice. And then over time, we call it titration. You can play with all this. You can actually slow down your participation. That's the thing people never understand because the rules with dental insurance – 
you know, it's never going to get better. It's ne- people are never going to, you know, the clouds aren't going to open up someday and go, you know what? We've been thinking about this. We feel really bad, but we're going to start reimbursing <laughs> practitioners because we just feel like they've gotten the short end of the stick. It has nothing to do with healthcare. They're just doing their job on cost. They've got to make sure that it works financially. Right. It's a so the cool, it is it's like, a, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, that, that capping of the amount of people you will take, it's hard for some people because they're going to be like, well, okay, let that person in. You can't. You got to hold your ground, and we've been great about that. But it's it's amazing because it, it really controls your, your environment, and that leads us back to where we're coming full circle. When you walk in Monday, sure, that Monday specifically, maybe you may have a bunch of people on that day that are insurance based, maybe, but it's not going to be every day. Your in practice is not going to be overrun. Here's the greatest thing. Let's say time goes by. Rob and I know this for sure. When our four thousand went to forty five hundred. We chose one of those people that one of those plans that only took 400. We dumped it. Now we're back down to 4,100. We'll wait till it's back up to 4,500. Then we'll dump the other one. So we're using it as a buffer as we're controlling it as opposed to it controlling us. And so we, it has been, it has been such a winner. I hope that the people listening to this that think, you know what, gosh, I take a lot of insurance now. Do you? So if that's the case, walk in on Monday, get a baseline of where you're at and say, you know what? Somebody may say, oh my God, I have 1,300 people on this plan I can't stand. Say, okay, you know what? Great. Tell your team we're going to cap it at 1,000. But I'm over 300. Great. As people start trickling off, don't let any more in. It'll cut down to 1,000 and maybe keep it there for a while. Let the the rest of your practice fill up with people who are finding you on Google, who come in as fee-for-service, who will appreciate you. Because listen, I know the people like you. But the people who feel like they can come in and out at any given moment because you're on their plan or in a list, there is not a lot of value there. They may like you, no question, and you build a great relationship, but people are not loyal. They will leave in a moment over five bucks. Absolutely. If the illusion is I leave and I can't come back, oh my goodness, people don't want to leave. I'm like, you can leave. You're, you know, listen, more power to you. I hope it pans out for you. And I don't want to keep you from being happy elsewhere, which is my favorite tagline. Yeah. Um, But the reality is if you leave, you know, I can't tell you it's going to be that easy to come back. And sometimes people are like, what do you mean you won't let me back? I will if we have a slot, but if we don't have a slot, that's, you know, that's how it works. They're like, God, okay, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. That's (laughs) awesome. Yeah. So I I know I have a ton of questions on this and I know a lot of other people have questions. Again, if you're watching this, please add your questions in the feed on the right and I will ask Dr. Ramsey these questions. One of them, Dr. Charles Boppel. Hey, buddy, how are you? Uh, he asked, can we watch this later? Because he's. it looks like he's still working with patients. Absolutely. You can sit down with your team, um, watch this later. And then you can even ask questions later. And I'm going to ask Dr. Ramsey to chime in on the feed. So the cool part about it, we shot one on Friday. A lot of questions came in after hours through the weekend. Please ask these questions because we want you to get the most out of this when this stuff comes right. up. And, and Ramsey, you've just done an amazing job in this. And it's not so much what you, it's how you think. You're always challenging the way you think. Now, again, walk us through some of the other elements of, of what a Monday looks like, or maybe some of the processes, you know, in the afternoon. Are you going high speed in the morning type of thing and then kind of relaxing in the afternoon? What's Give me an idea well, what your Monday looks yeah, like. So, so I'm a big believer in this. You know, uh, as you know, I, I I talk about humans. That's my I, I do a lot of team programs. It's mostly about um, you know your mindset. And again, I do art of persuasion, body language, decision making. I talk early on in the lecture, and I try to express to everybody. We know if you get a good night's sleep, you're freshest in the morning. That's right. the bottom line. Now, I know people say, "Well, I've got people that they can't come in because they work and this and that." You know, the reality is, people go, "Well, I work," and often I go, "Yeah." That's what I'm doing here. I'm working. This is yeah. not a you know playtime. So you've got to start to be okay with adjusting your schedule to the fact that maybe it's always not going to be ideal. I want 80% of it to be ideal. So if I'm I don't want to start something complex in the afternoon when I'm not fresh. I mean, you can fight what I'm saying all that. You could be driving right now and say, I disagree with that guy. That's okay. But science tells us our brain is freshest in the morning. You start bogging it down with all the stuff of the day. You're tired, man. This is a physical job. You know that, Kirk. You work with Dennis. It is yep. a it is a it is a mentally and physically challenging day. Look, I'll be honest with you. People know this about me. I've had two back surgeries. I'm 47. Now, granted, it was because of some other things, but the back surgery, it doesn't make it any easier to work. I'm good, thank goodness. You know, my partners had some stuff. You know, we've all had stuff. So this is a physically demanding job. So I have to look at this game both physically and mentally. 
And so I want the least amount of stuff that's going to stress me in both of those degrees. So right off the bat, you got to know your freshest in the morning. So if you can, I would like to isolate your big stuff in the morning. You know, so I have my main production slots. I do have one production slot in the afternoon, but I don't want it to be something super complex because you're just spent, you know, on, on Monday. Um, you know, one of the things I think the, the hardest thing is people get upset with is the amount of no shows on a Monday. My question to a lot of practitioners is, what are you doing on a Monday? What are you doing in your practice or your business to eradicate that? And I can tell you, you probably know this better than I do. There are numerous companies out there that can assist you with that. I, we use Sesame Communications for our website hosting. They offer this service. I know there's Demand Force. I know there's all these different companies who can help you. A lot of our patients are getting texts and emails. And do you know how many people walk through that door and they go, oh my God, thank God I got that text last night. I would have forgot. You know? Yeah. So if you're, if you're relying on people just to remember, and it doesn't matter, you could have called them yesterday, they forget this morning. It's right. crazy. You got too much going on. If you've ever listened to Seth Godin or listened to him, read his books, it's just, we got too, less and less time devoted to everything. We're just bogged down with too much stuff going on. And yeah. so reality is, you, it's okay. I use an outside service to help me communicate. And as you learn that about these companies, people will come in and say, hey, listen, I got a text, an email, and a call. Can I opt out of the email. Sure, you can opt out of whatever you want, but initially we take our entire database, give it to these companies, and, and they know who's got appointments, and now they're hitting them. And we've saved a lot of appointments because of texts and emails. Let me let me tell you, automated, automated, boom, boom, boom. It's great. Works really well. Yeah, absolutely. You got to have a system in place. All cancellations, I feel like, to start chair side somehow. Really, that's, you know, because you can't just put it on the front desk team or the administrative team. But what you're talking about absolutely works and you can't have those cancellations because they'll kill you. Having no patient isn't no profit. It's negative profit in that time slot. So, you know, everybody's got to be working you know together. For, what? You, need to, you, uh, you know what? I would never tell you how to run your own podcast, but you need to repeat what you just said because that's a huge line that people do not realize until they're 15 years into your thing. It's not no profit. It's negative profit. It's negative profit. Well, you do the math at the end of the day, a couple cancellations. I mean, your your profit is gone at two cancellations completely. Now you're working for free. So one right. cancellation, you're working for half of your profit, maybe a quarter of your third profit. It doesn't matter. It depends on the you know the complexity of the practice. But you get sure. into your third cancellation, you are now working for free. So that should freak you out a little bit. And really, that is not the team's – you know, the team's got to be engaged, but you can't put the pressure on other people. you got to get really – We've got to get synergized around how we're going to create our systems and make sure people show up. I'm going to make sure that all appointments are confirmed upon schedule. Do you know what I mean? They, I'm going to make sure you're coming. Like this is not a maybe. This isn't a suggestion. This right. is you're coming. And uh, we value your time. No different than a hairdresser. Great hairdressers know, hey, look, you know, if you don't show up, it's going to be about eight weeks before we see you again. And that's just how it works. And you yeah. just. That we have, that I have a rule of thumb of that on, on restorative. If you no show or or whatever like that, it's three to four weeks. Even yeah. if it's truly not three to four weeks, it's three to four weeks. Because if you're saying, "Oh, I know you couldn't make it. Uh, you want to come in tomorrow?" You're you're setting a tone of "I'm available anytime." So feel free to abuse me. You know, yeah. there's just no way I I can't do that. And um, so we again lines in the sand. Say, listen, I get it. Now I'm really sympathetic. Like I was raised by a single mom. You know. I get, you know, single mom calls and legitimately it's our first time. Oh my God, my kid is sick. I get it. Things happen. Mm -hmm. But you start to see a trend with certain people. You know, we start to do, we start to have certain issues where we realize, okay, we've got these patients who are constantly, you, we've got to eradicate that because you're right. Oh man, there's nothing worse. I learned this six months out of school. There's nothing worse than an empty chair. Nothing right. worse. Yeah. You know, it's, it's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It's brutal. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're looking at, you know, doing all your difficult procedures and, and I'm going to go back to one thing that you said, you really got to pay attention to the sleep patterns, all that kind of stuff. When you can give your best energy things that matter most, you know, if you're younger in your career, you're probably going to do a lot of more heavy restorative type stuff in there. But then as you start to mature in age, you're going to find that your mind best works when you're talking to patients, diagnostics, and that might be how you start a day, whatever it is, you call the shots with what you said, Ramsey, is so critical. You make the rules. Your house, your rules. So right. what, are, what are some of your other rules that you have for Mondays? Well, for Mondays, I think the most important thing is, uh, again, um, this is kind of a, this is more of a general thing. But, you know, you've got to um, you've got to trust your team. I, I think that's the biggest I think that's the biggest thing. You know, you can't put people in these positions if you cannot fully trust that they have you and the in the 
and the practice's best interest in mind. I think that's the first thing. You know, so when we get people attached, I asked people at the Ritz one time, I asked the manager, I said, how long did you train uh, these girls uh, before they were allowed to pick up the phone? They're like, two yeah. weeks. Wow. Two weeks. Two weeks of training to understand. So you've got to be able to let go. I think the biggest, I think the hardest thing right now is the fact that we have a lot of dentists, and I get it. I totally get it. A lot of these people are my friends. They're such control freaks that they can't let it go, and you're getting in your own way of success. That's yeah. the bottom yeah. line. You can't micromanage it. You're in the back, drill, 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 suction, drill, 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 drill. You got to know that in the front, you got to trust the people that have your best interest in mind. So a lot of what I think is important on a Monday is that communication, especially with my people who are going to be making my first points of contact, mm -hmm. you know? Or where are we? Where could be the shortcomings? And then we work through those and we work through those together. I don't want to be a dictator. You know, I want them to have a vote. Um, they may not have an ultimate say, but they definitely have a vote of how things should be handled. I want them to be able to feel free to come to me and say, Mrs. Jones was running 15 minutes late for a 30 minute appointment. I rescheduled her to a different day. Would you like me to bump up somebody else a little earlier? That synergy of, of working just takes the stress away. You know, it's, it's amazing. Don't micromanage uh, your Monday. But let's talk about Mondays in general. So you get done with the huddle, you find the shortcomings, and you kick off your day. I think the most important thing right off the bat is you've got to expect there's going to be problems. There, there's going to be issues that are going to run. How many times you walked in and you're like, why is these computers not booting up? Yeah. What the hell? They yeah. just worked on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Now they don't work. But you know what? Remember the old commercial? Uh, I think it was for deodorant. Never let them see you sweat. Mm -hmm. Never let them yeah. see you sweat. Um, yeah. I'm big on all kinds of things. I'll tell you, Kurt, from the moment we get started, um, I've often talked to my team about, you got to understand what earshot means. Nothing. Don't be talking about personal live, what you did over the weekend. And once patients are go, it is a it is a go. And I'll tell you what I like to do too sometimes. I like to walk around in the morning, and as everyone's settling in in the morning, I go around and say hey to the patients. Now, you may say, okay, that's a little hokey, Ramsey. It only takes a second. I bop, I poke my head in, and I go, hey, Joe, how's it going? He goes, go. I go, dude, you made it here on a Monday morning. That's awesome. And we yeah. laugh about it, but it does create a culture. It creates an excitement where they're, they know they're being appreciated for showing up. You do that enough in your career, you're creating that culture of what people want, you know? So... I know that's not. I think I know that's a little bit more general, but I'm trying to really truly give you an aspect of what goes on here every day as we go from room to room. Just saying hi to people, thanking them for being here, making the joke. Oh, who wants to be here on a Monday? I appreciate it, brother. You're yeah. here, and that's half the battle. You know, I'm trying to celebrate their success, and their success sometimes is just getting out of bed and coming yeah. to the dentist on a Monday for crying out loud. Yeah, you know? that's so funny. Yeah, and your partner, Dr. Rob Ritter, just said, focus, focus, focus. You and I can go all over the place. We can talk about anything, right? So, yeah. but that's it, true. You, you do have to focus. Now, here's one of the th other things I said, uh, you, you know, when, when we were, or you and I were talking about before we got started, Mondays can be kind of manic, but give me a little sense of, do things start to get down into a pattern by Tuesday? So now you're going to go out to dinner, you know, or be home with your family and, you know, kind of get through money. Do, what, what's the rest of your week look like in your practice? Well, we've often joked that we said we early on, my partner and I, uh, we used to say, God, if we could take Mondays off, that would be great because everyone seems to be firing on on Tuesdays, you know, yeah. and um, I again, I think I've, I've, may have said this, I may be repeating myself, but I think you've got to create a culture early on that says, what is it when you when the when you hear the, the gun go off and the race begins, the race yeah. begins. So I think everyone's expecting to kind of be dragging on Monday and with the excuse of, oh, I've had a long weekend or whatever, but We've got to understand that, that Mondays really set the tone for me, truthfully, for the rest of the week. Right. If I have a good Monday, it feels like, all right, we made it through what is typically the hardest day. I'm ready for the rest of the week. Right. You know, so it really goes in um, ready ready to, to attack Monday, not just from um, you know, a systems place, but when we are talking with our team, I like to see a productive Monday, no question like anybody else. Mm -hmm. But if the production falls apart, I don't want my team to see me start falling apart. Does that make sense? So yeah, I want yep. to understand, okay, we've got some hiccups here. You know, what can we do as a team to recover? And it's amazing. When you have a high-functioning team, they'll start looking for those things, those extra things about, hey, you know what? Mrs. Jones was coming in Thursday. Would you like me to call her and get her in uh, now at 11 o'clock? You had a blowout, those type of things. It's having that team that can move things around. We've got a girl at the front desk. Her name is Ashley. I have never seen someone be able to move things around in such a pleasant way. She'll have you 
shucking and jiving between days. And at the same time, she's doing it with a smile. So yeah. I think the ability is, there's got to be flexibility when it, you know, there's got to be flexibility, but there's got to be rigidity. You got to be able to bounce between those two. And, and, um, I think if you can set the tone for your team for a great Monday, you'd be shocked how well the rest of the week, the week goes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And even when you look at the metrics, because we study a lot of metrics, you know, it's so important to have that energy and the focus at the beginning of the week, like you're doing with your team. We even watch diagnostics tail off after Wednesday. It's amazing how much dentistry gets diagnosed, you know, late on a Monday into Tuesday and then Wednesday. And then by Thursday, it starts to tail off just because a lot of people don't have the energy, the focus, all that kind of stuff. So it's critically important. Even the little touches you do, you do that even personally, you'll just pump, bump in and just say hi real quick. It just adds a little, it's like a little bit of, you know, sunshine, whatever it is people need throughout the course of the day. You know, as a leader, I think, I think as a leader, you need to come in on Monday. I think this is important. You need to come in on a Monday and you got to have a mental note. What is important to me today? What would I like my team to do today? Let me give you an example. We all get together and, and my partner may say, guys, I want today just two, just two. I mean, you're, we're going to see eight times four, 32 hygiene patients. We're going to see Rob's patients, my patients. We're going to see a lot of people. We just want two Google reviews. We yeah. need to make that happen today. It's amazing because everyone starts trying for Google reviews and now you end up with four that day or whatever. Right, right, right. You come in every Monday that says, you know what? Here's what I want out of today. Not only do I want great care and all that, that's an obvious, but what do I want collectively for us to do? I want us to collectively get one or two Yelp reviews. I want us to collectively get two Google reviews. I want us to be able, you know, I want to do, uh, I want to do something that wows people today. That needs to be our goal because what happens is if they just think I just got to go do, you know, uh, we've had a recent meeting where we said at the end of the day, I want at least 20 intraoral pictures that I can go back and look at. Well, what does that mean? That means, okay, everybody try to get one or two. They're the great communication. I had a team member say, well, what if there's nothing wrong with the patient? I said, were they coming in for a cleaning? Yes. Yeah. Then get a picture of the lingual, of the lowers, all that crud that's there. And then when you're done cleaning, take another one and say, look at this. And people go, wow, I didn't realize my teeth were so dirty, right? We've got all this technology. We need to use it. But people get in on Monday. They're like, okay, I just got to get through the day. I just, and it needs to be more than I just got to get through the day. It needs to be what, as a leader, what, yeah. do, you, what do I want to happen today? I want yeah. Google reviews. I want the intro camera used. I want um, something done. You know, I want to, uh, I want to make sure that. Uh, we do something. We, we, we did, a, you know, we did a fun thing one time. Uh, Rob had a great idea, you know, hit a certain production number. He takes some, some bills, you know, throws them in a, in a, in a baggie, shake, 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 shake that. And all the team members reach in, you know, there's one big bill in there. Who's going to get that big bill, you know, and it's yeah. all it's a little bit, some fives, some tens, and you know, maybe there's a 50 in there. I don't know, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, whatever. And at the end of the day, boom, you know, everybody's like, Oh my gosh, you know, I can go buy McDonald's now or whatever, you know, just, yeah. It's those constant things. I think where we falter the most in dentistry, we've got to let our teams know how much of a part of their, our success they are to us and how much we appreciate them. And unfortunately, in dentistry, I think we miss that sometimes, our ability to let that team know how integral they are to the success and or failure of what we're doing for a living. And um, they got to be recognized for that. Yeah. Amen, brother. That's why you're a genius, both of you guys. It's awesome watching. So, so that's, you know, great opportunity just to take a different look at how Mondays work for you. Now, how do people get a hold of you? So if I have some questions, obviously they can enter them in the feed, but how do I find Ramsey? Who, who you know, how do I find you? Yeah. I mean, listen, there's two ways to get to us. If you know, if you got general practice, um, okay, I, I'm going to tell you this. I, I don't think we're the end all be all, but sometimes people will contact us and say, you know what? I'm thinking about redoing my website. And I'll say, you know what? Go look at our website. It's a uh, www Ritter, R I T T E R, the word and Ramsey, R R A M S E Y. So Ritter and Ramsey.com. I really like our website. Is it the best website out there? No. But what's happened is my partner, I got to give him a lot of credit. He spent a lot of time understanding what was important in a website. And I know you're going to have other people talk to you about these. It's a great subject matter for a podcast. But look at our website just from the information in the layout. There's a lot going on that they may not notice. And people do love our website. As a dentist, don't get caught up in the before and afters. Right. Get caught up in what do you see when you get to the landing page? Does it look inviting? Yeah. You know, you got to look at things like that. So if you want to get a hold of us, you can go to RitterandRamsey.com. Uh, when you get into the doctors, there's a link to Rob Ritter's personal website. There's a link to my personal website. So 
For people who like to bring me in for lectures, you can do that, or you can go straight to ChristopherRamsey.com. And then from there, you can email me whatever questions you may have or reach out to me for whatever's going on. You know, I try to get back to all the emails I can. You know, sometimes they'll say, can you send me the 25-step protocol for your bonding in of veneers? I'm like, no, I yeah. can't. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but what I can do is start to say, hey, I'm having trouble with this. We get people that say, I'm looking at buying a scanner. What's your thoughts? Well, we have four. So yeah. I'll tell you what my thoughts are. And we have maybe two more coming in the future. So there's a lot going on. Again, we don't have all the answers. But Rob and I have been together a long time. We spend a lot of time with dental companies. We spend a lot of time listening to the customer. We spend a lot of time trying to improve our team. And lastly, I'm going to tell you this. You're listening to this podcast. You're somewhere in America right now, driving around. Maybe you're at home on your headphones, watching TV. You've got a great potential to be awesome. I can't imagine. Okay, Kurt, I can't imagine there's any dentist out there right now listening to this that wakes up every day, stretches out when he gets up and goes, I can't wait to be mediocre today. Oh my <laughs> God, I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm going to half-ass it through the day and I'm going to just be mediocre. And 20 years from now, I'd like to look back at my career and go, wow, that sucked. Yeah. Nobody wants to say that. No. So you have the potential at any point to say, you know what, today's the day, I'm going to make a change and make them small. Sometimes, you know what, you can walk in and say, you know what, I'm going to redress my whole team. I want my team to look fresh and new and clean. What's that cost? Some uniforms? Whatever that might be. And let your team have some influence on, the, on what they may wear. Change is great. Think about this, Kurt. We don't do anything we did five years ago. Nothing that we did five years ago. We don't make electronics the same way. We don't build cars the same way. We don't make clothing. We don't do anything we do. So if you're doing something you did five years ago and you're wondering why it's not working, yeah. go ahead and Google something called the Curse of the Red Queen. It's actually saying you're running in place trying to look for the same results. You're not getting it. That was from Lewis and Carroll's Through the Looking Glass. You know, mm -hmm. So the reality is your practice is one of two things, and I hope people take this to heart. Right now, your practice is either bread or it is wine. You are either getting older and more valuable like wine, or you are getting older and more stale like bread. You are not just having another year wow. where it's the same. It is either bread or wine. you got to make a decision right now. What do I want now? What do I want in the future? Hopefully, everybody at the end of the career looks at it and goes, I've got a big, nice bottle of 82 Lafitte Rothschild. It's worth a million dollars. Oh, yeah. dude, that is so good. I am totally borrowing that from you. That is yeah, fantastic. Yeah, you're the bread or wine, baby. Bread or hey, wine. Hey, I love it, buddy. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching this, a couple things. Just like I said, we really enjoy your questions. And as a thank you, one of the things we've done, we've partnered with WooBox. And this is so great. So add a question, put in a share, add a like, and I'll throw in one ballot into a hat. And at the end of the month, we're going to give away an Apple iWatch just because I love the questions, love the participation. So if you're watching this, so if you do a share, like, and a question, that's three ballots in there. We'll send you one. You guys will love these. These things are awesome just because we love the questions. So please ask Dr. Ramsey some questions. Ask us some questions and keep watching the best practices show. So, um, Keep this in mind. Today is Monday. Make it less of a manic Monday and have some fun. And until we see you next time, make it a great week and keep watching the best practices show. We'll see you next time.